It's December, which means nobody, myself included, wants to do any more work because what's even the point? At the same time, I feel like maybe, just maybe, I can muster one more video before we say goodbye to 2023, and since we're already at the end of the year, a recap of some sort is the obvious choice. But what is there to talk about? By what metrics could I measure a year such as this? This is The Mouthful, my name is Ringer, and there's a question that needs an answer. I know what you're thinking. Ringer, didn't you already do a panel about this? <laughs> no. And you want to know why? Because last year, like a dozen people showed up, including the hosts, and that felt bad to have happen. Don't get me wrong, I'm very grateful to those who were there, but nothing could assure me that I wouldn't face the same issue this year, and if I wanted to drone on about shoes to an empty room, I could just make a video instead. And this is it. You're watching it now. Or maybe you're not. I can't tell, and that's the beauty of the internet. Either way, I'm going to be getting into some of my favorite sneakers from 2023. It's going to be subjective, which is true for pretty much any sneaker of the year list, so I guess that could have gone without saying, but still. Also, there won't be any Nike Dunks. Everybody already knows they're good. We don't need to talk about them more than we already have. So let's get down to business, starting with... I don't think there's enough enthusiasm for risk taking in sneaker design, so I wanted to start off with some shoes that I like a lot, but not ones that you'd realistically want as your only pair or wear on a daily basis. What they lack in versatility, they make up for in spectacle, and that's why my choice for this category can't be anything but Mischief's Big Red Boot. Inspired by beloved Japanese character Astro Boy, the Big Red Boot ignored basically every convention and footwear design and in doing so became a fashion meme in the early half of the year. And I kind of love that. They may look a little silly, but I think that serves as an important reminder that fashion isn't always this serious, unapproachable monolith. It's something we should all try to have a little more fun with. The other thing about the Big Red Boot is that it sort of marked a turning point in my opinion of Mischief as a company by being a product that didn't rely on weird, we're not supposed to be doing this, aren't we naughty? hype to prop itself up. Just recently, a judge banned them from selling shoes that were very clearly inspired by Vans old school without being any sort of official collaboration, and they've run into similar issues with Nike. While they certainly were living up to their name, it was all kind of tiresome at the same time. But now, here in 2023, they seem to have turned a corner. The Big Red Boot, Gobstomper, and more recent Super Baby shoes are examples of products that are interesting and original without being legally dubious, and they've also leaned into actual collaborations with companies like Crocs and Reebok. So congratulations to Mischief, which is honestly something I never thought I'd say. Okay, so the problem with end of year lists like these is that a vast majority of shoes that come out that people actually care about are just new takes on shoes that already exist because we are all secretly terrified of change and can only handle it in the smallest possible increments. This results in lists saturated with retro Jordans, SB Dunks, and collaborations with names normal people have never heard of, rather than celebrating anything wholly original. And while these shoes are all fine and I like them too, it's a sad state of affairs if the only new stuff we get excited about is actually old. But we still have to talk about it. There was a lot of neat new old stuff this year, but I think the neatest of all for 2023 is the Union Beffy's Beauty Supply Jordan 1. If you follow sneakers, they're maybe not the Jordan you expected, but yeah. While Union is responsible for a few of the more coveted Jordan collaborations, their more recent releases have sort of fallen off a cliff hype-wise. Maybe in the case of their Jordan 2, AJKO, or Cortez, that's understandable, but a Jordan 1? Well, the problem is that when the rumors started flying about a new Union Jordan 1 high, sneakerheads worked themselves into a lather over new colorways of the shoes that put Union on many radars a few years ago. So when images of the actual pairs started to trickle out and it turned out that while this new pair shares a lot of those same details, it wasn't just a direct copy and rather a Sakai-esque combination of the Jordan 1 and Nike footscape, those same sneakerheads were less than pleased. But hey, they're loss. I think they're a really interesting take on a silhouette that's practically been done to death at this point. Instead of relying on a flashy color palette, they can be paired easily with a ton of outfits while still standing out as something different than the usual. So congratulations to Union, BBS, and Jordan brand, even if these didn't get the attention they deserve. There's a reality where the options I had for brand new silhouettes that I was genuinely excited about were so sparse that I ended up giving this one to a model that technically came out at the end of 2022. 
I guess that's the result of living in a post-Yeezy landscape, because there don't seem to be many other major players focused on continually taking risks the way Ye did. But at the last minute, a miracle of sorts. A partnership and gestation for the better part of three years finally bore its first fruit, and it is delicious. Sorry, that was weird. I'm talking about Fear of God Athletics, Jerry Lorenzo's collaboration with Adidas. But let's rewind for a sec. At the end of 2020, Adidas announced their plans to partner with Lorenzo. Prior to that, he'd been working with Nike to produce some of my favorite original silhouettes in recent history, but Nike got a Nike, and it sounds like they just weren't willing to give him the level of control he ultimately wanted. This sounds familiar. Then for two years, basically no news. I think in 2022 there was like a hoodie that came out, or it was just a teaser or something, I don't remember. This year though, things really started to move. There were constant teasers of different silhouettes and colorways, some of them brand new and some that were reimaginings of classic Adidas models, but never any concrete information on what was actually coming out or when. It wasn't until late November that the clothing capsule became official, and with that we also got our first glimpse of where Fear of God Athletics would fall from a pricing standpoint, aka a lot higher than people were expecting. Okay, so the Fear of God brand is divided into three main segments. The main Fear of God line, which is very expensive, the Essentials line, which is relatively affordable, and now Fear of God Athletics, which is sort of in the middle. And that's fine in theory, it doesn't really make sense to have two product lines with similar pricing, but I think it's tough for people to wrap their heads around because it just doesn't look all that different from any of the other Fear of God stuff, and if anything, the Adidas logo sort of gives the vibe that it should be less expensive, not more. And I think this is an interesting phenomenon with Adidas in general because Nike sort of trained a lot of people to expect that a designer collaboration would be less expensive than if it were just a product from that designer. This is most prevalent with their off-white shoes, but the same is true for Acronym, Matthew M. Williams, Sakai, pretty much any designer they work with. Adidas, on the other hand, tends to price their stuff more in accordance with what the designer would charge. While Fear of God Athletics kind of splits the difference, their recent work with Gucci, Balenciaga, or Montclair indicates that they just don't look at designer collabs the same way Nike does. So, we all knew Fear of God Athletics was launching December 3rd. At least, the clothing. But the shoes, Jerry! What about the shoes? As it turns out, the shoes were also part of the plan, but just weren't announced until the day before. And boy were they, because the collection launched with four new styles. Three of them were fancier versions of other Adidas SKUs, but the other, the Fear of God Athletics 1 Basketball, is my favorite new silhouette of 2023. Clearly, a lot of my excitement for these was born from anticipation and a fondness for his work with Nike. But I also think they're genuinely just a really nice design that expertly combines styling cues from both companies. The overall shape, the midsole, the extra lace toggle, and the color palette clearly define these as a Fear of God product, but the technical materials and the lace stays mimicking the shape of the stripes from the classic Predator Accelerator soccer cleat ensure that there's no mistaking them for anything other than Adidas. I keep wanting to go off on another tangent about the pricing, but it's fine. They're not inexpensive, but they're reasonable for what they are and who was involved. No, I changed my mind. It's my video, and if I want to talk about pricing, I'm gonna, because I think it's honestly kind of wild that people balked at these as hard as they did. At 250 US dollars, I'm not saying they're inexpensive, and if that's more than you want to spend on a shoe, that's fine. But based on retail prices for A, other Fear of God sneaker collabs, and B, Yeezys, especially their basketball silhouettes, these are pretty much exactly where they should be. If anything, I was preparing for them to be more, considering pricing on the rest of the collection. This sort of served as my periodic reminder that I'm a weirdo when it comes to shoes because I sacrifice important data in my brain in favor of remembering completely useless information like this, whereas I think the typical sneaker enjoyer just doesn't. Anyway, congratulations to Fear of God Athletics and Adidas for nailing it, even if it took way too long. Speaking of taking too long, we can't wrap up without talking about some of the other cool new shoes this year because there were actually a lot, so in no particular order, here are some others that I really liked. First, another mischief shoe. Those Reeboks I mentioned earlier, the Omnizone 9. A really fun and wild take on one of Reebok's most iconic silhouettes, and nobody even needed to sue anyone about it. There's the Cactus Plant Flea Market, Nike Air Flea 2, especially in Faded Spruce. They look like Balenciaga tried to make a mountain biking shoe, and I just think they're neat. I was lukewarm on Undefeated's Nike Air Humera collab at first, but to be honest I think it may actually be a banger. There are a lot of lazy sneaker collaborations, but this isn't one. I like that Undefeated chose a model that's been out of production for half a decade and was never overly hyped to begin with, 
and the details and materials suit it really well. These just came out recently, and I think about buying them every day. A similar revival is the Ronnie Feig Frank Lloyd Wright Foundation New Balance 998. The name is too long, but I love the colors, and they also led a wave of new 998 releases this year after a long hiatus. I'm really glad they're back because I think it might be one of my favorite models in New Balance's catalog. And this is a contractually obligated mention because you're going to see it on literally every other sneaker of the year list, the Nike SB Air Jordan 4. Can you believe it? Nike SB took a shoe originally made for basketball and made it for skateboarding instead? Look, it's an interesting concept and I like that they used the Nike SB logo on the back instead of the more typical options, but besides that, still a pretty normal looking Jordan 4, and that's not a bad thing, but I think it's probably the most overhyped shoe on this list and maybe of the year. Anyway, good job Nike SB for sneaking into this video despite my best efforts. The New Balance 990 V6 was my backup plan for new model of the year. It came out last November, but it's a great design that really hit its stride in 2023 thanks to a number of high-profile collaborations. Action Bronson Baklava colorway in particular is one I truly regret missing out on, and I really love the more recent Carhartt pair as well. I've mentioned previously that I have a real fondness for Nike's Lunar series, but the name and tech were phased out around 2017 to make room for React. I truly wasn't expecting a brand new model to bring it all back in the form of the Nike Lunar Rome, but here we are. It's a really great design that gives me high hopes for more colorways in 2024. And finally, for real this time, is the Montclair Soleil Bembury Trail Grip. Even if you're not super into fashion or sneakers, you may have heard Salehi Bembury's name in passing as a result of his work with Crocs or maybe New Balance. He has a really fun, distinctive aesthetic, so it's no surprise that his collaboration with Montclair resulted in some really exceptional pieces. The shoes are great, the clothing is even better, and it's all much too expensive for me, so all I can do is just tell you how good it is and how much I like it. <sighs> well, that's it. We made it all the way through, and by we, I mean me. I don't know if you did, because that's not how videos on the internet work, but if you enjoyed this thing, you should like, comment, subscribe, or whatever, and if you have a question you'd want me to sink my teeth into, you know where to reach me. At any rate, as a little treat, I'll let you in on a secret. Sneaker of the year lists are meaningless. Yeah, they can be a fun topic of conversation between you and your friends, but there are no data points that will objectively rank the best sneakers to come out over a given time period. It's just a bunch of nerds looking at what all the other nerds are saying and then trying to put their own spin on it to seem original. You as a viewer slash consumer slash whatever else are not obligated to like or even remember any of it. So instead, if there's one takeaway I'd like to sign off with, it's this. However you approach it, whether through fancy shoes or cool jackets or whatever, being more thoughtful about what you put on your body and taking the time to experiment with fashion and develop your own sense of style are all worth the effort. Putting on a nice little outfit can really go a long way toward making you feel better about yourself and everything. I mean, if you don't believe me, consider fursuits. Then imagine that, but every day. Thanks for watching. Happy holidays. Ringer out.